संसार A dream come true. One day, Srila Prabhupada described to me a dream he had the night before. In it, all of his disciples were in Tompkins Square Park, surrounded by thousands of people dancing and chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. He asked me to recreate this scene in a painting. I agreed at once, but before I had time to consider how to do this, his dream turned into reality. The managers of the park had planned a festival for the coming Sunday, and they asked if he and his disciples would like to chant on stage. He told me to put aside this painting idea and instead paint a large Hare Krishna mantra sign to carry with us onto the stage. I quickly found myself sprawled across the parquet floor in his quarters, painting the Mahamantra on a large sheet of heavy oak tag paper. I couldn't figure out how to reach the top section of the huge sign to apply the paint without laying myself over the holy names that I had already just drawn in pencil. I tried stretching my arms, but they didn't reach. As I crawled across the mantra, I was convinced that I was doing something wrong. I remembered my recent reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam. The name Krishna and the personality of Godhead Krishna are identical There is no difference in the absolute realm between the name, form, or person of the absolute truth. Because in this absolute realm, everything is transcendental bliss. Feeling awkward, but seeing no alternative, I continued painting. I was so absorbed in my work that I didn't notice when Prabhupada entered the room to see how the devotees' various tasks were progressing. Suddenly, I saw his feet and looked up. Oh, Swamiji, I didn't see you, I said. Am I being offensive to the holy names by doing this? Prabhupada smiled. Once, Krishna had a headache, he said. He asked his servant Narad Muni to get dust from the feet of any of his devotees. Only such dust could cure him. Narad went everywhere, but no one cooperated. They all said, how can we put the dust of our feet on Krishna's head? He is God. We will go to hell for such an offense. Finally, Narad went to Vrindavan, where the gopis lived. Since they are Krishna's most unalloyed devotees, they all offered to help. Guru Maharaj used his own hands and feet to show the gopis taking dust from their feet and offering it to Narad. Narad asked, Do you not fear going to hell for such an offense? They replied, Never mind. We shall go to hell, but let Krishna be cured. This is the kind of selfless devotion that Lord Chaitanya came to teach. This is love. For loving service, you can take all risks. I thought I appreciate the practical application of the pastime and continued leaning over the written mantra as I worked. It wasn't until later that I realized I could have somehow affixed the oak tag to the wall. Then I could have painted the sign while standing and sitting rather than laying over it. I was grateful to be learning, step by step, that practical application of pastimes and philosophy is a matter of spiritual acumen. It's not automatic for the beginner. That afternoon... 
the sign indeed accompanied the devotees chanting on stage. Along with an excellent amplification system, the mantra resounded throughout the park. Prabhupada and his spiritual family chanted for almost two hours before thousands of park goers who blissfully joined in. Although most of the devotees would be staying and chanting for another hour, Prabhupada decided to leave before it ended. I also wanted to return to the temple to continue my painting service there. So I walked the nine blocks back to the temple along with him and Rai Ram. I offered to carry the heavy harmonium we had used in the kirtan, but after a short while I began to feel the weight and regretted my offer. Prabhupada must have read my thoughts, for he turned to Rai Ram and said, You can carry the harmonium for her. As soon as we reached the temple, I began painting and some minutes later, Prabhupada called to me from his room. As I walked in, he motioned to the stainless steel pitcher on the floor to his right, saying, You see the slight reflection of light on this pitcher? I nodded, surprised by the question. It comes from the wall outside the window, he said. I looked outside the window and nodded again. The wall's light is reflected from the sun. The sun is so powerful that even at midnight, the sky is never completely black. There is always some light. Where did the light come from originally? He asked enthusiastically. I shrugged my shoulders. Science was not one of my best subjects. From beyond the universe, he said. The universe is how big? He paused for a moment, raising his eyebrows as though waiting for me to say something, and then continued. It has a diameter of four and a half billion miles. Then, surrounding the universal atmosphere is a layer of earth. Resting his elbows on a pillow on his lap, he opened his palms and extended his fingers as if to emphasize his point. The layer of earth is ten times wider than the diameter of the universe. Around that is a layer of water, which is ten times thicker than the layer of earth, than fire air like that and each layer is 10 times thicker than the previous layer i leaned forward this picture of the universe was dramatically different from the one i had learned in school then there is a layer of mind intelligence and false ego he continued each is ten times thicker than the previous one. And beyond that, beyond that is Brahma Jyoti, the undifferentiated spiritual sky. That Brahma Jyoti is so powerful that it is reflected through all those layers of matter onto the sun, making it shine. And what is Brahma Jyoti? It is a reflection of Krishna's body. His body is so brilliant. He smiled, just like when we go out during daytime into the sunshine and we see bright blue sky. We feel, oh, very good. Similarly, when the devotees on Krishna's planet in his personal abode see him every day, we cannot imagine how good they feel. He closed simply and sweetly with, All right, that is all I wanted to say. You may go now. I was amazed. I offered my obeisances and left, and his words went with me. That evening in class, he gestured to one of the Indian prints on the wall to his left and remarked, We are not interested in going to Vaikuntha. We are interested in going to Golok Brindavan, 
where Krishna is sitting on a rock. Vaikuntha is the name of the spiritual planets in the spiritual world. In Sanskrit, Vai means without and Kuntha means anxiety. So Vaikuntha is the eternal abode which is always free from anxiety. Lord Krishna's expansion as Vishnu presides in his infinite Vaikuntha planets in his infinite expansions. We want to go to Krishna to get the nectar, Prabhupada continued, looking at an Indian print hung on the wall nearby. The calf is waking up to Krishna like this. He closed his eyes, smiled and slightly raising his chin, slowly moved his head back and forth in the manner of a calf. And Krishna is pleased to give her nectar. Though just a beginner, and though I couldn't begin to imagine the happiness of Krishna's associates, still I could hardly contain my own beginner's happiness. These early days at 26 Second Avenue drew me into Prabhupada's loving spiritual embrace in a way that cannot be described with words. A few days later, I arrived at the temple earlier than usual at 6.45 a.m. and for the first time joined several devotees already upstairs in Prabhupada's quarters. The altar room's hardwood floor was so clean that it practically shone. The room's only furniture, the solitary two-foot-high oblong table standing against the wall between the two windows, slightly reflected the small Indian print standing upon it. The myrrh and frankincense permeated the room with a sweet, exotic fragrance. Our Guru Maharaj soon entered and sat on a mat before the altar, facing the picture of Krishna and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, surrounded by vases of tall pink and orange gladioli, he looked stunning. Using the thumb and middle finger of his left hand, he picked up a small mirror and looking into it, began to apply yellow-white tilak or sacred clay to his forehead. With the ring finger of his right hand, he applied the sacred marking, softly uttering, Om Keshavaya Namaha. I offer my obeisance to Krishna as Keshav, he who has fine hair. He deftly marked the tilak on his abdomen, uttering, Om Narayanaya Namaha. I offer my obeisances to Krishna as Narayan, he who is a resting place of all living beings. I watched as he repeated this process on his chest and in the hollow of his neck, chanting the names of Krishna that are traditionally uttered while one marks one's body as temple of God. Om Madhvaya Namaha Obeisance to Krishna as Madhva the beloved of the goddess of fortune, Sri Radha, and Om Govindaya Namaha, obeisance to Krishna as Govinda, who gives pleasure to the land, cows, and senses. After applying Tilak to all twelve places on his divine form, he passed around the ball of Tilak, the mirror, and the archman, or sanctified water cup. This implied that it was now our turn. We then watched him perform the ceremony we called bells, a traditional arti ceremony in which one uses various paraphernalia to worship Krishna. He first took a thick piece of dhup incense, burning it in a brass cup and offered it to the Lord by waving it before his form. In this case, the forms in my new painting of Shri Shri Radha Krishna. While doing this with his right hand, in his left hand he rang two small bells. It was so interesting to see how he held the handles of those bells, one between his pointer and middle finger and the other between his middle and ring finger.
They crisscrossed like sparkling chopsticks. I was mesmerized by the sound of his resonant voice as he sang prayers while performing the ceremony. That feeling of primeval timelessness again enveloped me. He sang to his own guru. O ma jnana timirandhasya jnananjana shalakaya chakshur unmilitam yena tasmai shri guruve namaha He then offered his obeisances and after we offered ours, we all accompanied him to the temple room for the morning program. As we followed him down the stairs, his long flowing shawl reminded me of the picture of Lord Chaitanya and his dancing party. I asked Rai Ram, what did the prayer mean? We're born in the darkness of ignorance and the spiritual master opens our eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. He replied easily. Or he puts an ointment of Krishna consciousness in our eyes so that we can see Krishna. So we offer him our humble obeisances. Prabhupada entered the temple through the side door and took his seat on the dais. He looked scholarly in his black frame glasses. Kirtanananda, Achyutananda and Hayagriva sat in the front of the dais. The smoke from the frankincense curling around them up to the ceiling in soft, mystical-looking clouds. I was intrigued that although our guru's shawl was draped rather asymmetrically around his shoulders, it still looked more aesthetically perfect than the perfectly folded robes in a Leonardo da Vinci painting. He picked up his kartals and... As if on cue, Achyutananda played a drone on the harmonium. When Kirtanananda began to play the tambura, he called Kirtanananda to sit closer. The rhythm of the mixture of instruments was hypnotic. Rai Ram, in his plaid flannel shirt and yellow dhoti, and with his Christ-like beard and hairstyle, was the first to dance. Hayagriva followed him and the tall, lanky Striyadisha, staring into space, danced behind Hayagriva. I also got up to dance, feeling myself flowing into the music. I swayed from side to side, my large hoop earrings jangling as I danced. Shakalan, Narnavasha, Mandi Buddha, Sita.